Right, Coach, well, thanks for joining us today. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of excitement going on with uh, the start of basketball season, but last night was a big day and a big night for you. You had your third annual coaches clinic all day here at the Show Me Center. Yeah. And then you also had a very nice tip-off event over at Dalhousie, uh, which really had a great turnout. Um, but some of the guest speakers that you had, you know, with the clinic was Coach Imhoff, and then you also had Tony Baroni with the Memphis Grizzlies. And you had uh, Coach Hanson, one of your dear friends. But just talk about that day in general. Well, it, it was. It was a special day. Any, anytime you can have a clinic. And, and we're very fortunate because we have the Show Me Center. It's, a, it's an outstanding facility. Um, but we're very, uh, anytime you can have area coaches come into one place and talk basketball, it, it, it does wonders for our program because we, we like to get and know these high school guys, and uh, whether they be uh, uh, boys coaches. Or, or women coaches, and so uh, so we had both, and we had from all states. We had from Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, uh, and of course Missouri. So um, so it was fun. It was a fun day. Our speakers were fantastic. Uh, Coach Imhoff was really good. Uh, his record speaks for itself. And then Tony Baroni was one of the best uh, speakers I've ever heard, and, and our, our players really enjoyed him. Um, and then we were able to take the floor, and then Barry Henson, uh, the head coach at Southern Illinois, came over and and uh, it was a great day. Our clinic was good. And then, then we go to our party. We had a, our booster club party, and we had a magnificent turnout. Uh, and it was uh, held at the beautiful Dalhousie uh, Country Club, Golf Club. And so we, we had a lot of fun. We had a big day, and it was, it was great. It was just a big, successful day for us. And um, I'm most thankful uh, for everybody that attended last night. We, we had a good time. And those things obviously took place on the eve of your first official practice which will be later today uh, here at the Show Me Center. But uh, let's preview this year's team a little bit. I mean, you've got a lot of experience coming back. Let's kind of go down the line with this year's team. Well, I think everybody right now wants to talk about Tyler Stone. I think here's a guy that has emerged as, as one of the best players in the league. Uh, he's six, eight and a half, um, or probably one of the fastest big guys in the country. Um, and he has really improved both on the floor and off the floor in terms of his classroom uh, uh, academic performance. And, and so we've been most proud with him. You know, he went on a tour, we talked about that, went on a tour this summer, and it was a great, great experience for him uh, to tour, uh, to go to Brazil and play on a, on a national team. And so that was good for him, was good for our program. But I think everybody wants to talk about him. You look at Nino Johnson, uh, those guys in the, in, in the uh, uh, on the front line that, uh, that we feel like were big and athletic, and I think we're going to be good in that area. Uh, Jacob Torbert is one of the newcomers uh, that's going to that's going to play this year. I think uh, he's really been surprising. He's probably been our, our most surprised uh, player. Um, uh, Colin Ferguson's a, a new young man that's six foot ten that's uh, going to take up some room in there. So we feel good about our inside play. Michael Porter, although he's bothered with an injury right now, but we feel like he's doing good and making. Uh, making some uh, some good strides, and then if you look at the guard situation, I think uh, Lucas Nutt and Nick Dimchik are probably the most improved players we have on our team. Uh, their summer was really good, really special. I think you're going to see some good players with those two guys. And you look at Corey Wilford, you look at Marlon Smith, AJ Jones, uh, Jared White, just to name a few of the guys that I feel like that can be a big impact to our team. But I, I think the single most important thing that we're most excited about is that we have experience. We have some guys that've been through the wars. Uh, we were able to, to play at a high level last year. We were competitive. Uh, we stayed around second place the entire season. We lost the last three games and fell to fourth. But we regrouped and went to the tournament and had some good times there. Um, and, and the majority of these guys are back. And so that's a good thing. And so we do see the corner. Have we turned the corner? No. Uh, but we do see the corner, and um, we think we have some pieces of the puzzle in place. we just got to put it to work now. And then Marlon ends the year, you know, he's, he's ranked on the career scoring list. I mean, he has not been to move up there. He's also on pace to uh, chase that three-pointers made record. Um, but, but he's been, you know, a consistent guy in your program. He's a four-year guy. Uh, I, let me tell you, Marlon Smith, I said this last night, he's an angel. Um, here, here's a guy that has come in four years, three years ago, and, and starting his senior year. And I, and I do think, I do think he'll break every record. Uh, that, that we have here in Southeast Missouri, but but the thing I love about Martin <coughs> is that he's dependable. You know, you can count on him. He's he's um, he goes to class. He has a 3.0 uh, grade point average. He's, he's never missed a practice, never missed a game. And so, you know, Martin's one of those guys where uh, we're we're going to be sad to see him walk out the door, but we're going to enjoy him.
his team to be here looking. I, I really think that he's going to make us a winner. And then just to shift gears a little bit, you know, we spoke to Tyler Stone and, and Nino Johnson earlier, but they've been doing some great things, you know, away from the university a little bit. And I'm speaking in terms of Tyler going to Brazil in the summer. That was an awesome experience yeah, for him. Great experience. And then Nino recently attending that uh, NCAA Career and Sports Forum in Kansas City. But that's just got to be great representation of your program to get those guys out there. Absolutely. And, and one, first of all, for being nominated and selected. Uh, by the NCA and going to Kansas City for that workshop for the weekend and the way he handled that and represented us is, is outstanding and, and that's the thing that I'm most proud because these guys are, are now put in front of a, a different stage uh, and, and different people and, and uh, now I have people from the NCA calling me, hey who is this Nino Johnson guy? Man, it, that does a lot for our program because here's a guy, uh, Nino Johnson, uh, that was, you know, and he, and he knows that I'll talk about this. Um, you know, we were on, on thin ice there for a while, didn't know whether he was coming or staying or whatever because he was kind of um, uh, disappointed with his playing time and, and really thought that he might need to go somewhere else. And so, you know, we really, uh, you know, explained to him that patience is the key. And, and uh, not only that, he got back into summer school, had a 4.0 this summer. Uh, and now being selected to the NCA workshop and going and representing us well. I'm, I'm very proud of Nino Johnson. Not to mention, he's about 6'9", uh, 230 pounds, chop blocker. So he's a big man. So I think we're gonna, I think our fans are going to enjoy watching him and just a sophomore. And then lastly, let's just talk about the schedule a little bit this year. I mean, this will be the first time that the league <laughs> is going to have divisional play with uh, Belmont joining the league. So you've got the league now at 12 teams. Um, we were picked second in our division behind Murray State. Uh, but talk about you know the makeup of this year's league schedule, and then also talk a little bit about the non-conference league, which will feature Kansas and Missouri. Well, I think first off, uh, the non-conference schedule is going to be is going to be good. Uh, I, I think uh, you know I have people ask me all the time, "Are you crazy to play Kansas and Missouri in the same year?" But you know this is something we have to do. Um, I would rather play teams like that if we have to play the money games. Uh, I'd rather play teams like that uh, than traveling all over the country playing people like Oregon, uh, like we did last year. Sometimes it just can't be helped. But I would rather play St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas, uh, you know, all these guys regionally. Uh, you know, Kansas is an outstanding basketball program. There's, there's no question about that. But our, our guys are looking forward to that. Uh, I had fans that call me on a daily basis trying to get tickets for that game. Uh, so this is exciting for our program. It's exciting for our... Our, our team is exciting for our fans, um, and, and, and we love that. It's all about college basketball, and I assure you that our, our, our guys, they will be pumped about playing that game. Uh, now, whether we can stay on the floor, you know, it remains to be seen, but, but I am proud. I'm proud of our, our schedule, I think our schedule, our non-conference schedule is well balanced. I think we have some good games in there. Uh, it was a very difficult task this year. Uh, Arkansas State, Southern Illinois, Carbondale, Missouri State, they all dropped us. They, uh, they will not play us. And I think that's a terrible disgrace to our fans and to us and for everybody else involved because I feel like that we should be playing all these teams around us. You know, we should be able to drive 45 minutes over there and play Carbondale, and they should come right back here. Same way with Missouri State, same way with St. Louis, and, and so, you know, I'm disappointed sometimes coaches choose not to play, but that's, that's fine, that's their business. We have to worry about our business, uh, we'll look forward to that. In, in terms of as far as the conference is concerned, I think our conference has made huge strides. The addition of Belmont is going to really help us, and, and I know a lot of coaches are griping about that, or, or maybe... Uh, worried about that, but I don't. I don't take that approach. I, t I take it as this is a great thing for us because this is just like having another Murray State into the program. Because I assure you, when Belmont steps into the Showman Center, it'll be sold out. Um, just like Murray State this year, it'll be sold out again, like it was last year. And so, you know, we want a ticket to be hard to get. And, and have we arrived? No, we haven't. But we're on our way, and I, I do believe that. And, and, and our, our kids are believing that. And there's a certain there's a certain amount of air on our basketball team right now. They, they think they're pretty. We're not near as good as we think we are, but but we're getting there. We're getting better. And I think uh, I think if you come watch our team, I think you'll you'll walk away and say, man, those guys give it everything they have. And that that's my biggest goal. There's certainly a lot of exciting times ahead here with the I Red Hawks so. men's basketball program. So best of luck this season. Thank Coach you. Jim. Thanks for taking the time. Thank to you, Jim. Very much. Thank you.